Okay, for this problem, they give us a, a graph that we're going to use to answer this question. So let's go ahead and read through this, and we'll look at the graph at the same time. It says a rectangle, okay, so we see that in here, the shaded rectangle is bounded by the x-axis, so it means the x-axis forms one of the sides there. It's also bounded by the semicircle, square root of 9 minus x squared. It's bounded by that because the height of this box, which is actually the same thing as our width, that depends on what point you pick along this curve, it's going to change along there. So because it's going to change, what it's asking for is what do I have to set the x and the y equal to? What dimensions should I put on this rectangle so that I get the maximum area? So I got to find out where do I put this point on here in order to maximize the space on the inside. That's what the question is asking for. And of course, once we find the dimensions, we can find our maximum area. First thing you want to do is set up your equation. So because it's asking you for an area, we've got to set up an area equation. Now area is equal to length times width. In our problem right here, the length is going to be, you got to be careful here, it's 2x, not just x, because x goes from here to here. So if you want the whole length, it's going to be 2x. And then times y, and that's going to be the width of the rectangle. Now that we have this, what we're going to do is we need to get this down to one variable when we take the derivative, it's going to be easier with one variable only. So for this, you're going to do a substitution, take out the y, replace it with the equation that goes with it, square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay. And in fact, what I'm going to do here, because I have to do a derivative, I'm going to automatically just write this as 9 minus x squared to the 1 half to make it easier when I do chain rule. Now, this requires me to do a product rule combined with a chain rule. Okay, I have the first piece, 2x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second, 1 half comes down, I have 9 minus x squared, subtract 1 from the exponent, and I get negative 1 half, but don't forget to do the derivative of the inside. If I do the derivative of the inside, I'm going to get an, a negative 2x. It's very important, if you don't do the inside part, you're not going to get the correct answer. So that part right there is crucial for this problem, remembering to do that step. Plus the second piece, 9 minus x squared, to the one half, and then times the derivative of the first, which is going to be uh, just two. We have all this, that's our derivative, so I should be marking that. That's a prime there, it should be. And we're going to put a zero in for that, because now that's always what you do with these optimi optimization problems. You have to take the derivative and then set it equal to zero. In this case, the twos are going to cancel out, but I have a negative two x squared left over. And then this part here, negative exponent, I'll put that on the bottom and I can turn that back into a square root. So square root of 9 minus x squared. This part over here will turn into 2 square root 9 minus x squared. Okay, and so then once I have this complete, I need to set it equal to 0. Probably the best way of doing that is to do cross multiplication. So I'm going to bring one of the terms over to the left hand side and then cross multiply. Okay, so hopefully you have this first part written down already. I'm going to erase this so I can get some space. And then I'll move this over. I get 2x squared over square root of 9 minus x squared is going to equal 2 square root 9 minus x squared. And I'm going to write that over 1. So this, turn, this whole piece right here just moved over uh, to the left hand side. Now I'm going to do cross multiplying. Multiply these diagonals. 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared. Multiply these diagonals. That's 2, and then the, the square roots are going to cancel out. I just get 9 minus x squared. What you can do here is you can multiply it out if you want to, or what you can do is you can, you can actually cancel out the 2's from both sides. So I'm going to do that first, cancel out the 2's. Then I don't need to worry about distributing anything. I'm going to move the x squared over. I get a 2x squared equals 9. x squared is 9x. 9 over, 9 over 2, I should say, x squared is 9 over 2. And then I want to square root both sides. Now when you square root something, you're taking the square root of the top and square root of the bottom. Square root of the top is going to give you 3. Square root of the bottom is going to give you root 2. And I can make that plus or minus, but again, because I'm talking about a rectangle, that means that I need to just worry about the positive side on that. And you can do 3 over square root of 2, but most of those online homework systems probably won't like this kind of answer. They want the answer to be rationalized. So we can rationalize that. 3 root 2 over 2 uh, would be the answer for x. Now, I need to also find the y because asking me for 
the two dimensions, the length and the width. So I need to, to now put this back into the y equation right here. So square root 9 minus 9. You can use the original one. That might be easier for squaring if we just use 3 over the square root of 2. I think that'll make things easier to do it that way. And if we do that, then that's going to give us the square root of 9 minus 9 halves. Square the top and square the bottom. Okay, so I get that. And then when I simplify this, 9 minus 9 halves is going to give me 9 halves left over on the inside because that's 18 halves minus 9 halves. And then what do I get? I get exactly the same answer I had before. I did the same thing, square root of 9 halves over here. So again, that's 3 over root 2 or 3 radical 2 over 2. Okay, so now I have my x and the y. Now, for this kind of problem, when you're writing your answer, they're going to ask for the width. They're going to ask for the length when you're typing this in, okay? We've got to be careful when we write our answers. Okay, now the width we know is the shorter side, that's the y. So that's going to be automatically be 3 squared of 2 over 2. But the length you've got to be careful because there's uh, two x's there. We said that the length was actually equal to 2 times x. So what we have to do is take this answer and multiply it by 2. If we multiply this by 2, cancel the 2 out in the bottom, we have 3 radical 2 as our length. So again, you got to be really careful when you do this one because, again, you've you got to do 2x for your length. The last thing we have to find is the area. And hopefully you have all this. I'm going to erase this here. Let's do the area. The area is basically equal to, we know it's equal to, to the length times width. We, don't have, we could put the x value back into our original equation we had for the area, but not necessary. If you know this dimension and that dimension, just multiply those together. Remember back we had area equals 2x times y, that was our original area. So I have area equals 2 times 3 square root of 2 over 2, and then times y, which is 3 square root of 2 over 2. We plug that back in there. We already mentioned before these twos are going to cancel out. If you multiply these two together, multiply across, 3 times 3 is 9. Root 2 and root 2 is 2. So you, technically you get 9 times 2 on top, which is 18, divided by 2 is 9. So that's going to be your area. Because there's no dimensions given on the original problem, we don't need to put any units on here. The only thing you could put for that is you could put 9 square units. And then each of these could be a unit, but it's not necessary because, again, there was no dimensions given on the original problem. So these would be your three answers, the width, the length, and the area.